Hello everyone! So in this video, I would like to take you along the journey of me making a mock-up for a mid-1800s like 1800s, um, corset. So this was worn during like the Civil War era, like around that time. So I wanted to take you along on this journey and hopefully it will be both entertaining and informative and help you out if you thought of trying this Laughing Moon pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. This is the pattern that I am following in this video, and there are two options of corsets, and I made just for the ease of it, of being a little bit slightly simpler, I decided to make the straight seam corset. Um, there's also a version that uses gores, um, but that's a little bit more difficult, and I was hoping to make this somewhat easy, so I started with this one, but I do want to make this one later. Um, so this pattern comes with the straight seam corset as you see the diagram the lines are a lot straighter um, and then this one there are triangular gore pieces that you work into the work to the garment and it also comes with a pattern for drawers and um, a chemise for that era so this is what you're going to see me making um, and this is just the mock-up of the process. Um, I think I'll do another part two of this to show you the final product of the final garment. <laughs> yeah, so I hope you enjoy this. The corset pattern pieces are all cut out for one side, so I think I will start putting these together and then after this side is sewn up, then I think I will cut out the other side. Hi Axel, you're a sweet boy. I just started sewing the corset together, so this is the center front on the right side of the garment. and. For the most part, I actually want to try doing a single layer of fabric for um, the rest of the panels other than the center fronts and backs, um, just because you absolutely kind of need to have two layers for those areas. Um, so now what I'm going to do is this will be the pin busk side, the where the pins go. So for this, I need to mark where the pins are going to sit. Um, so I'll take a pencil with this, like, carefully fold it over with it snugly in its place. And with the pencil, just mark above the fabric where each of these pins are for the bust. And then I have an awl that will be delivered from Amazon today. Hi, babe. And um, then I'll use the awl to poke the holes. It'll be so nice to actually have a tool to do that. So um, I am starting the very beginning of actually assembling the corset and in case you want to try to make your own corset as well I want to make it to where you can kind of follow along with me so you'll know what to do all right so the pin marks are marked on this fabric on where they will fit in between the two um, layers of fabric and then once my all gets here which should be soon then I will poke each hole with the awl and slide it into place and then I will anchor the busk into place with a line of stitching down along the edge. So it will be like placed in between these fabrics and then it will be anchored in place by sewing a line just to keep it in there. All right, I am so excited because my new awl came in. This is what it looks like. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was like four to six dollars. But now I can easily make little holes in corsets. 
And awls are really awesome because um, it keeps the area of the fabric stronger um, instead of like cutting the threads of the fabric it just kind of pushes them aside and to form a hole and that just makes the fabric stay strong that looks so nice so we have one hole So this is what it looks like. I have the bust sewn in in place by hand. So now I'm going to go ahead and um, start attaching the other panels of this corset. I now have one side of the corset all sewn together. So since I've sewn the buskin, I attached all of the panels one by one. Before I sewed on the last panel, um, the last panel has two layers because it needs a little bit more strength than grommets to go through it. So the last panel and then the front panel both have two layers, but the rest of the body of the corset only has one. Um, but I went ahead and sewed right sides together on the inside, then I ironed everything out, and then I top stitched over the center back to strengthen it here. I should have done that on the other side in the front, but I I totally forgot. It also would have made this look cleaner. I usually do that, but I just didn't, I don't know, I totally forgot. But I normally do that, and I also ironed all of the um, seams open, except this one, which I just attached the um, the back panel on, the center back. So I do need to iron this open. And I will have this anchored, um, this is the um, the second inner layer, and I, that will be anchored down by boning channels and stuff. And then on the inside, I will have um, boning channels covering the seams. This will strengthen the seams and also cover up the loose, um, the loose, what do you call it, seam allowance or whatever, <laughs> but yeah, that's where I am on this, and um, all you, I simply did was sew the panels together as you can see, so you can follow along if you want to. Um, I do need to add a, um, what do you call it, waist tape. <laughs> I will need to add a waist tape. Um, at the section where the waist sits just to strengthen that area um, but for the most part this is complete beside other than the boning channels um, and putting in grommets um, so this side is basically done and now I can go ahead and begin working on the other side I decided to go ahead and do a little bit more on this side of the corset before I start on the other side. So I have this um, boating tape stuff, I, I can't remember the name of it right now, but um, as you can see I have one piece cut and pinned right here along one of the seams. So I'll be sewing that, place, that in place um, and then I'll be able to do a bit of boning after I put it on each seam and then 
figure out other ways that I want to place it on the corset. I went ahead and finished sewing all of the boning channels that cover up the seams. So here's what it looks like. And you can sort of see the shaping. This part goes over the hip. And this is the bust portion. So it looks a lot nicer and cleaner now that the seams are all covered. So right now I am preparing to do the loop side of the busk. Um, so what I've done is I've marked just with a pencil where the little gaps for these loops need to be so that they can fit through after I sew the center front seam together. Um, so as I sew, once I get to these little gaps, I will lift the needle, push the work through to skip this little section, and then continue sewing on. And I want to back stitch in between each little section, each little section, just to make sure it is anchored in place and shouldn't come apart easily. So that is where I am at at the moment. All right, so I just tried on my corset for the first time and there are some issues. So the bust line is way too high. So with a marker, I kind of marked the mid bust point and I'm gonna have to like take and cut off this whole top part. So this bust is too long. This is a 13 inch bust and I have a 12 inch bust and a 10 inch bust um, that I could use to switch out. But I think the 12 inch busk is just, wait, this must be the 10 inch, okay. Um, so here is the 12 inch busk. I think it might just be slightly too long. 
So I might have to order an 11 inch busk to be able to complete this. Um, so the 12 inch is too long and the 10 inch I believe is just too short. So I'm gonna have to get an 11 inch busk. But this is what it looks like. It fits really nicely over my hips, but I need to take in the waist part and um, I think the bust needs to be taken in a little bit. This is closed all the way in the back. I can't really. As you can see, it's kind of, it's like closed all the way in back. So I do want there to be a one to two inch gap in the back just for weight flunk fluctuations. Um, but this is sort of I'll kind of smooth out this line when I do cut it off. Um, so this is why you should do a mock-up before um, you make your final product, the product before you make your final product, um, because then you see how the pattern fits on you. Um, and again, I've said I'm using the Laughing Moon pattern. I didn't put on all of the bones. I figured I would try it on before, like doing all the boning, because the bones that I did put in, I have to cut and file them again um but yeah i i now know what adjustments i need to do to this i'm gonna have to basically take this whole thing this whole mock-up part so that i can trim it down um i'm gonna rip out all the seams and then put in a 11 inch busk so i'm gonna have to go order that um because what i have is not working 13 was way too long 12 inch is just a little bit too long and then the uh, 10 inch one that I have is a little too short so this is my like 80, 1840s corset so far um it also should smooth out when I have all of the boning in so there is some wrinkling but I'm going to be taking in the waist just a little bit because it's a, as you can see I mean it's kind of loose like this is closed all the way in back and there's like looseness to it so um, I'm gonna take in the bust area because I can like easily slip my hand, whole like hand and arm in here um, and yeah those are the adjustments I need to make I think it'll look a lot better once I have this all taken apart and redo it and then yeah <laughs>